Over the past 10 years, insurance companies have paid out more money in property damage claims due to weather events than they did between 1982 and 2002. That's just a fact, and most of us have felt the pinch with our annual insurance premiums. However, the immediate conclusions being presented by corporate media and some insurance companies are mostly false. They blame anthropogenic climate change or man-made climate change, but the real reasons for this perceived increase in radical weather events can be explained by other data. A recent study found that six widespread fires burned in 1790, 1817, 1831, 1863, and 1905 during the period of rapid fire accumulation. By studying trees across British Columbia, researchers were able to conclude that raging forest fires, due to dry conditions, have been common throughout the past, long before climate change became the flavor of the century. This study, in fact, suggests that a lack of fires between 1946 and 1976 may be the cause of more devastating recent fire seasons. With a reduction in controlled burns by local indigenous communities and a wetter regional climate, forests became thicker and overgrown. The study states, there is compelling evidence that in the absence of frequent fires, a substantial degree of forest structural diversity in Knife Creek has been lost. The Alberta floods of 2013 left climate nuts frothing at the mouth and wringing their hands with joy. Seeing Calgary underwater was like a collective orgasm for the eco-cranks in Vancouver and eastern Canada. Even academics and professionals in media found ways to tacitly say that Alberta had finally gotten what it deserved. This was the proof and poetic justice they all needed and wanted. Except, there's one historical problem with their arguments. Most of Calgary and High River are built on what is called a floodplain. Many in the scientific community actually call it the 100-year floodplain. Any area that sits level with a nearby river, like the Bow River, is at risk of being flooded multiple times within 100 years by a dramatic and drastic snowmelt or ice jam. It turns out, the Bow River was long overdue for a massive breach. The most recent breach of similar magnitude was in 1902. Virtually any weather event can be explained by more people living in any particular area. The reason we hear about more intense and frequent storms is because more people are around to see them. The land area of small rural towns has been increasing. Basic math and data like this often get rejected by those with political ambitions in Ottawa. One hundred years ago, cities like Toronto, Calgary, and Vancouver were a fraction of the size they are today. More importantly, they covered smaller areas of land. Even if we go back to 1973, cities like Calgary were dramatically smaller. If an identical storm with identical magnitude struck in the exact same location in 1973 and 2023, the results would have been dramatically different. With more people spread across more land in 2023, a city like Calgary would have faced more extensive and costly damages in 2023 than in 1973. There's nothing really complicated about any of this, but if you listen to those who peddle climate hysteria, you would believe that the climate is rapidly changing and that hailstorms, floods, and fires are becoming more frequent and intense in Canada. The reality and facts tell a much different story. <laughs>